the theme of this conference presupposes the phenomenon of sh shrinking audiences and shrinking market share. Tom and I are kind of taking a contrary view. We're going to be looking at a company that's actually succeeded in expanding its market share. Specifically, what we're going to be doing is looking at Nintendo and the marketing of its Wii, where it adopted a blue ocean strategy, a, strate a strategic model, first introduced by Kim and Mulroney. And we're going to look at how they have been able to significantly uh, extend the video game market through its blue, their Blue Ocean strategy. Now, the numbers suggest the success of this uh, console already, but let me talk a little bit about the technology here. Uh, the Nintendo Wii uses a wireless remote, which in and of itself is not a unique feature because its competition offers wireless remotes as well. But what was unique about the Wii is its wireless remote was able to track movement in three-dimensional space which required players to actually get up off the couch and move in ways that other video games did not. And indeed, since its introduction in 2006, it has moved, well, actually, the number, I checked the numbers recently, they're a little higher than this, uh, over 50 million units have been sold. The market share is still about 50%. And you can compare that to this competition in terms of Microsoft's Xbox 360 and Sony's PS3. Now, this market share signifies a significant reversal in, sh in fortune for nin uh, Nintendo. Because the last generation of game consoles, the situation was quite different. And you see the sales figures. Nintendo's GameCube only sold 21 million units in its entire life. This compares to Sony's PlayStation 2, which you can see sold 122 million units. All right? And even Nintendo lagged the Xbox. Now, We've chosen the Blue Ocean strategy because Nintendo has been very, very public about the, the fact that this is a strategy that they've chosen to market Nintendo's Wii. And we've decided to use the defining characteristics of the strategy as a normative framework in which to judge Nintendo's success. In other words, if these are the defining characteristics, then the strategy, a successful strategy, should manifest these characteristics. And I'll kind of elaborate them as I apply them to some of Nintendo's strategies as we identify them. Now, a Blue Ocean strategy is designed to create uncontested market space. And they defined the old market space as red oceans, in which all the competition is fighting with each other for the same kind of market segment. And what's interesting is that Nintendo was really kind of responsible for creating what became the red ocean for the video game market. It introduced its uh, Nintendo Entertainment System back in 1985. And at this time, the video game industry had basically cratered. So much so that retailers were extremely reluctant to su support or, or even stock any type of video game hardware. Now, a lot of the company's activities. In addition to the gaming console market, there also is the handheld market within the video game industry. And this is basically divided between Nintendo and their DS products and Sony's PSP. Now, Nintendo has really focused on women in terms of its marketing for, the, for its DS handheld, incorporating uh, certain, well, developing certain software programs such as Nintendogs and Cooking Mama that are directed toward a female market, and developing ad campaigns that draw upon female celebrities, showing them playing the console. You can see the Amer American actresses and uh, singers that. Uh, that were incorporated in these campaigns, uh, Nicole Kidman and the Australian campaigns. Uh, there are ad campaigns in Japan and France that also use women in terms of targeting for the DS. So they're extending that practice into their other markets, their other product lines. But really, in terms of aligning all of their practices, perhaps nothing says it better than the president in the 2008 annual report. And it really sums it up in terms of what he says and the fact that regardless of race and or age, gender, language, cultural background, or experience, we want all of those people to be the users of our products. And the picture on the cover of the annual report really does show, uh, show a shift in terms of moving outside of that demographic. So the conclusion. Well, Nintendo is very cagey about the, the new demographics of its market segment. But really what they're after is the bigger picture. And when you look at the new market share that they're enjoying, indeed it seems that they have been successful in terms of creating uncontested market space. And what they have done is they have now redominated the video game market 
through reinvention, by casting off the old standards of the industry and adapting some new standards and moving their product into completely different types of market segments. So in answer to the question that's posed at the beginning of this presentation, uh, clearly uh, Nintendo wants the, uh, the answer to be everyone. Thank you.